Hiya! Uh, so in this video, we're going to be looking at orthogonal operators on some Euclidean vector space. Um, if you need a rewind or um, a quick recap, remember that orthogonal operators, we defined this um, a last week? Last week, I think. Um, and in particular, we're only really going to look at two dimensions and three dimensions. Uh, so go back and watch that video if you don't remember. Um, we will be going through them shortly. Um, okay, so orthogonal operators. Um, the, what we're basically going to be showing today, um, or the rest of the lectures, is an orthogonal operator in E2. So orthogonal operator, remember operator, this is just some linear operator. It's either going to preserve or swap the orientation of a basis. Uh, based on the determinant, if the determinant is negative or positive. Um, and in fact, what we're going to see, it's either going to be a rotation or a reflection of E2. So we saw this example um, a couple of videos ago, where in E2, we either had a reflection or a rotation whenever we did some operator on it. Um, and remember, this is going to be dependent on whether it preserves orientation or not. So here, let's start off. Um, we're going to set some basis B, E1, E2. Um, and we're going to say it's an orthonormal basis. Right? And let's recall what this means. So an orthonormal basis is basically saying um, the following. We have, I guess I should put this. So we have E1, E1, right? Uh, this is the, going to be the same as e2, e2, and this is equal to 1. And in particular, the inner product of the opposites of any things that are not the same is equal to 0. So remember, a shorter way to kind of write this, we said that ei, ej is equal to the Kronecker delta of ij. Um, in other words, they have unit length. So the key, the two key parts where they have unit length and are orthogonal to each other. Um, the other thing to also recall is that if I take some, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. If we take an ordering on a basis and we fix this orientation, by default, remember we have a choice in what we say, left or right orientation. We're going to call this a left orientation. So in other words, we're generally going to say we're going to deal with left orientations, not worry about right orientations. Well, I mean, we will deal with the right orientations, but by default, we will just we will say the standard orientation is the left orientation. OK, so we set up all this. Let's look at what happens. So we're going to start off with some linear, uh, some orthogonal operator. Now remember, orthogonal operator is basically defined as the following. Orthogonal operator is this definition. So if I act on the vectors by p, then it's the inner product doesn't change. Now, if I take some new basis, right? So I start off with some new basis, c, f1, f2, um, which is defined by applying the linear operator to my basis. Then what do I get? So recall that what this is basically saying is this is some alpha e1 uh, plus gamma e2. And here we'll say this is beta e1 plus delta e2. And here my alpha, beta, gamma, and delta are all going to be real numbers. Now what this is basically saying is, okay, so since we have this, I can consider the matrix associated to this. Alpha beta, gamma, delta, oops, no, wait, 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 rewind, alpha, gamma, so gamma needs to go down, there we go, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, um, now, in addition, what we have, if you kind of recall, so we're putting a lot of things together here, now, if, so here, so one sec, what we have, uh, one thing to note is we know C is an orthonormal basis, so C here is F1, F2. So we know this is an orthonormal basis. <coughs> and then we have, oh. furthermore, that P is orthogonal whenever 
P of B is an orthogonal matrix, right? In other words, whenever we have the following equality, right? So we have this equality. Orthogonal matrix means that when I take the transpose times itself, I get the identity. We know these matrices, so we can actually try this out. So what does this look like? Alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. This is the transpose times alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Oops, that is not a delta. Delta. Uh, what this gives us, alpha squared plus gamma squared. So here I'm just doing the multiplication. Alpha, beta, plus gamma, delta. And then alpha, beta, plus gamma, delta. These should be the same, yep. And then beta squared plus delta squared. My deltas and gammas look very similar. Uh, I should be a little more careful. Okay, hopefully that's okay. Okay, so we have this. Now this gives us even more restraints on the conditions, right? So we know that this, right, these two are equal, right? So what is that, what is that telling us? This gives us that alpha squared plus gamma squared is equal to 1. Beta squared plus delta squared is equal to 1. Uh, and then finally, these diagonal entries have to be equal to zero. Gamma delta is equal to zero. So these are one conditions. And these two here, so these two conditions here, so alpha squared plus gamma squared equal to one, and beta squared plus delta squared equal to one. These are just equations that cut out a circle, right? So these are given by some circle. Right, this is generally what we say when we say x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, right? So in other words, we can actually consider these using um, cosine and sine and stuff like that. So in other words, we can say alpha is equal to a cosine of phi for some phi. Uh, and that'll force that gamma is equal to sine of phi. Uh, and then we can do the same thing with beta and delta. So beta is equal to cosine of psi. Delta is equal to sine of psi. So that's these two constraints done. So this is coming from these ones. Now this last constraint here, here we have alpha, beta, plus gamma, delta is equal to zero. What this is basically saying is I can take these four equations, put them together and see what happens. So alpha, beta, is cosine phi cosine psi plus sine phi plus sine of psi. This is equal to zero. But what is this here? If you remember addition and subtraction of cosines, this is nothing more than cosine of psi minus phi, yeah? And this has to be equal to zero. So we have this equality. So cosine of psi is equal, sorry, cosine of psi minus phi is equal to zero. Um, so that's like the main constraint here. So we basically converted this constraint from above, um, that alpha is equal to cosine of phi, gamma is equal to sine of phi, etc., And we converted it into this one here. So we have this kind of equality here. Um, now one thing to kind of note, um, and this is the following observation, that we could have pick, equally picked um, other values of alpha and gamma, right? So here, when I made this choice that alpha is equal to cosine of phi and gamma is equal to sine of phi, I could have chosen the opposite. I could have said alpha is equal to sine of phi, gamma is equal to cosine of phi, right? Um, and we could have done a similar thing for, um, right? Uh, this is, right, there we go. And we could have done the same thing for beta and delta. Um, and what we still want is for this to satisfy these same constraints. Um, and the reason why it does satisfy the same constraints is basically because of these equalities. So if I take cosine of pi over 2 minus phi, I do the, all these operations, this just gives me sine of phi. So in other words, there's a nice way to go from sine to cosine without too much of a problem. Um, so in other words, we can always put our angles, our alpha, beta, gamma, delta in the form that we have above. So in this form here, um, which will give us the following constraint. 
So let's kind of stop. Um, and before we end this video, we'll kind of put out all this information into one big thing. Um, and basically, well, the big the kind of final proposition for this section or lemma is that if um, I have some ortho orthonormal basis, so I let B be some orthonormal basis, and I let P be a linear operator, uh, then P is an orthogonal linear operator or orthogonal operator. If and only if its matrix P of B can be written in the form, so what is our alpha, beta, gamma, delta? Remember, this is our cosine of phi, sine of phi, uh, cosine of psi, and sine of psi. So if we can do this, in addition, we need the constraint that cosine of psi minus phi is equal to zero, which if you think about this, um, yeah, so we will, we will stop this video here because um, it's getting long. Um, and in the next video, we will look at this constraint a little further and kind of see what happens with this constraint for, uh, for linear operators. Uh, so I will see you in the next video. Peace.